Howdy folks, we are here with the rabbit project. We're going to attempt to put a new speedometer cable in this thing. Now, the weird thing is, is that this has probably got a tranny out of a 1979 or older unit because I actually had to get the speedometer cable for for a 79 and older uh, unit. So this is going to be a weird project because realistically folks, if this was what they claim at the auto parts store as an 81, uh, both of these ends would actually be the same. So. This one is for the 78, 79 and older, and this is what actually fits in this car. Uh, you gotta remember folks, that this is 40 years old. This car actually does not have all the original parts on it. Um, and many of the original parts that are on it are actually around the engine, not the rest. because. Uh, for starters, folks, the air intake, that plastic piece there that you're seeing, yeah, this is actually off a later model, uh, an 82 and, old and newer. So this thing is actually a mismatch of parts, and I'm actually surprised that it all works. So we're going to finally uh, get down to it speedometer cable. Now, I'm going to probably start us off in the interior because realistically, folks, all we got to do here is we got to take this bolt out of the transmission down there and then the entire cable assembly should come out. And uh, now it only has one gear. It, it, it does not come with a gear. So you have to transfer over your old gear onto the new speedo shaft. That is one thing that if this is broken in any way, folks, that you have to do that. So. Let's, let's get that story out of the way. It does not come with a new gear. It only comes with the cable. All right. And literally, I'm just going to take this off because all, all you got to do is grab and pull. And all you should have to do is get it lined up. And there we go. That's all you should have to do to get this end of the cable done. So, let's see. Can I actually do two things at once? Yes, I can. Let's bring you inside, folks. Whoa. All right. Okay. When we come in, side. Come on. You're going to have your dash bezel. That's That's going to be a surround all the way around. There's two bolts, uh, screws here and here, and it's going to be clipped in here. Now, 
if you've got a diesel and you got the cold start knob, it just unscrews, okay? Your headlights, um, if you can get to it, there's a plunger back in here, which you're going to have to crawl underneath the dash, and this whole rod will come straight out. You got to have the headlights on and then push that plunger in, and this whole rod will come straight out. Okay, I have fitted this, fitted the dash bezel for the new stereo, so I haven't done that. Now you're going to have your four screws that are holding in your gauge cluster. You got to pull them out so that you can at least get somewhere. Now, let's see. Can I actually shoot underneath the dash? Okay. Let me see if I can get a good picture for you folks. <clears throat> Okay. Way the heck up in there. And realistically, there's not a good shot because the realistically the steering column's in the way. But huh? You gotta cable in the back there and that's where that ring the ring will screw on this ring will screw on to the back of your gauge cluster now realistically folks you're gonna have a hell of a time trying to even find it so it's kind of a touch and feel thing. I would highly recommend you pull your battery cable so you're not frying the heck out of yourself if you do bump into something that you're not supposed to. So, let me get the gauge cluster somewhere where we can actually see it and I'll uh, kind of walk you through from there. Okay. As you can see, that cable, the inside of it, is completely bust. well, here. The inside of that cable is completely busted. This ring, even though it's different color, this is the ring that goes onto the back right here. Like I said, you are going to have a heck of a time seeing it you're going to have an easier time feeling for it up in here. And how I do it for feels, I actually go off of this bracket, this brace here for the steering column. Let's see. Yeah, that brace right there for the steering column. I just kind of work my way up in through. And you can see you got enough room to do it. You just ain't got enough room to see it. So this is more of a feels thing and oh. It you really can't do this job when the thing is attached to the mounts. You gotta have it come out that couple that like half inch to inch. The, there's really no way around it. So, you got to pull your, your gauge panel. Now, <clears throat> we should, in theory, be able to come out here. And up in here is going to be uh, the rubber grommet. And then remove some of the junk that gets piled up into the cowl. Seems like all these Volkswagens. And then there's one behind the washer bottle. This one that you pull out, and then the cable you kind of 
just snake it through. And, and realistically, this is a simple job. It's just, I get it, some people are so used to the modern stuff where they just slap a gauge cluster in and uh, hook up the fancy scan tool to it and wham bam, thank you ma'am, you're done. Well, for those that like mechanical things, this is what you're gonna be in for. So, what we wanna do, we got that out of our way, we're gonna grab a tripod here. Okay. We're gonna grab that tripod. Now, as you saw, there's the two rubber grommets here. And there goes our interior of the cable. Wonderful, wonderful. This one is, for some reason, is not crimped, such as the factory one is, but it'll work. It'll do. So, we gotta get these two pieces into the dash. Uh, do not connect this end with the gear first. Actually, that's how I broke this last cable, so, um, yeah, don't do it. Um, and oh, if you are pulling the gauge cluster, pull this, pull this end off. Pull, pull the end off for your transmission. Because, uh, yeah, these cables are very fragile. They, they love to break, and they are starting to become a little hard to come by. Especially during this time of unrest with the pandemic. That's a good thing. I digress. Now, we want to get both the rubber grommets in because that will prevent water ingress into the cabin that's going to prevent water ingress into the cabin and it's also going to prevent this cable from shredding from vibration And what I do is, is that here I'll, I'll show you what I'm doing. I use a pinching method. I I literally will pinch these and then start working them in. You know, they are rubber and they are fairly pliable. So you know, that's in now. We can start sliding the cable back in to the dash. The dash should, and yeah, we're probably going to need something to, yeah, bad angles. Uh, you're going to need something to pluck that cable end through, you know, so... But we're gonna have to start working on this one now. Now, I know it's it's a difficult thing, but but you see how I've started it, folks. And now I can come by and. And this one I got a little bit more leverage on because of just being able to get to the back side. You know, just being able to get to this back side here, I was able to kind of help it pull it through. So if, if you've got a friend with small hands, uh, they could help you with that one that's going into the cab. So something to think about. Now, uh, gauge cluster 
what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to grab a tool and put that on. Um, I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna get my long, long, long ex pair of needle nose pliers. Be right back and then we're gonna hook up the gauge cluster. Okay, very long needle nose pliers. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually see if it'll come to us. No. Ah. And we didn't need them. And all I did is I just pulled the cable back and forth until uh, it came out. So. Now, <laughs> I gotta reposition the gauge cluster and I'm, I'm actually gonna go get the tripod. I know it's gonna be horrible, horrible video for you, but at least you're gonna get to see the trials and tribulations of putting a gauge cluster back in one of these things. Now, it's getting that cable. It's gonna get that cable through. And let's see, come here. Let me see if I can show you how I'm doing this. Realistically, this is a horrible, horrible thing. You know what, folks? I'm just gonna set you folks up a seat, and you folks are actually gonna get to watch me cram my big meat nuggets up in here. Grab this cable and the gauge cluster. Get it in there, get it started, get it all nice and tightened down. Now, we can go into the engine compartment and try and seat that cable into the, yeah, we, if you folks can see, cable came out, so. Now, actually, folks, I'm going to use you to see if Speedo works. Okay? So, let me uh, get it reset up here. And you're actually going to show me, folks. see. 
Yay! All right. Now that's seated. Now I'm actually going to bring it back over once I zoom you out, folks. All righty. Now we're going to plug the baby in. And let's see, can I get you in here? Come on. That's screaming at me. Not a happy people. Not a bunch of happy. Actually, I think if I uh, crank your butts up. Ah, heck, I know what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> there we go. Now you're actually. Come here. Right down there is where we're gonna be plugging this thing in. Now comes the fun part. Actually looping this through down here and getting everything aligned. There goes the socket. <laughs> now, realistically, if we just twist this cable, we should get it to uh, seat down in here. <clears throat> then we can take our screw. Now this is a number three Phillips. Uh, this is not the big number four. This is the littler one, but it's not, you know, your standard number two. So if you are working with a flathead, uh, a standard screwdriver, um, go with the bigger sizes. So yay. I'm actually going to back you out so that you can actually see what's going on. And yes, I did take the battery out just to make sure that I didn't get electrocuted, you know. Heaven forbid I get electrocuted. Fun. Okay. Now I do believe that we are in, and I'm going to. Probably I'll do a road test with you, but I'm not sure. So, uh, if I don't, thanks for watching. See you on the next one. All right, we're back, folks. Where? Well, help oh, Chris put it in here. Now, I've actually had to play with the cable that goes, the part that goes into the transmission, because if you don't get that fully seated, it ain't gonna work. And now your cable isn't broken, but the thing is that it just is not gonna make contact with the gear that's on the shaft. And then your speedometer isn't gonna work. 
So, if you do all this and it's still not working, make sure that that cable is fully seated in. And especially after your test drive, if, if it doesn't work, take it out and, and make darn sure to really get it to seat down in. Um, number two, you gotta hold on to that gear as you're putting it in to uh, into the transmission or else it will not work what, at all. Uh, it, it comes out and then it comes out of the back of the gauge and, and then yeah, you're, you're done, you're done. Um, so keep those two things in mind. Uh, as you can see, it is working and it's, a, it's fairly accurate according to the GPS. So now I think we're done with this job. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.